Ah yes, the sun sets on another beautiful day here in Huntington Beach, California, and welcome to Scripture of the Day. And as you can see, it's me and five cups of tea. And we need your help. If you're watching this video, we need to hear from you. Because here in the office at Compass HB, we've got a little mini fridge. And it's got some drinks in it, and no one ever drinks them. And so we need to put a new refreshing beverage for the summer of joy because we're going to get thirsty working here at the church and we need something to keep us going. And how about some fresh iced tea? And so do you have a preference between these five ki kinds of iced tea? If you do, leave a comment on this video and let us know which iced tea we should stock the fridge with and whichever tea gets the most votes, we will fill the fridge with it here at Compass HB and we'll let you know what we think about it. So here's your options. The five different cups of tea you could vote to choose from. One, Snapple, made from the best stuff on earth. Two, Pure Leaf, sweet tea. Now I haven't tried this, but my wife says it's delicious and I trust her 100%. Lipton Brisk iced tea. Then we've got here a Gold Peak Tea. Never tried it before, never heard of it, but I needed five of them, so had to include it. And then Arizona Iced Tea, which I know is a favorite. If you think one of these iced teas is better than the others, please leave a comment and let us know so we can stock our fridge. But the real reason I've got five cups of tea in front of me is because we're going through the five books of tea in the New Testament right now. First and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, and Titus. And so we're coming to the end of first Thessalonians in this video, which means next we'll be starting second Thessalonians, two letters written to that church that Paul was pumped up about, and then we have three letters written to young men in their 30s who were pastors, uh, so letters written to individuals, we refer to them as the pastoral epistles. And Timothy and Titus that we're going to be getting to, and they have a lot to do with church and how we do church and why we do it the way that we do. And so these books of the Bible, I hope, are refreshing for your soul. I hope you're still reading the chapter every day, and we are praying for a revival that comes from the Bible. And speaking of refreshing, I got to tell you, on behalf of Pastor Bill and myself, we were so encouraged by your comments to the progress report that we had, and 10 of you sent in videos that really blessed us, that seemed really heartfelt to encourage us. So thanks to all of you for giving us some encouragement to keep going here on Scripture of the Day. Hey guys. I wanted to let you know that I'm extremely thankful for Scripture of the Day, specifically because of the blessing it's been at Marina High School. Shortly after Scripture of the Day began, every Monday, a group of us at lunch, we sit down and we have a Bible study of Scripture of the Day. Hi, Scripture of the Day. My name is Ming Tang. I am a senior and I started going to United this September. But um, because of Scripture of the Day, um, United encouraged us to follow it. and. We read through Romans, and it was that week where I got to hear about how we died to the flesh, and afterwards, um, the Christ and the Holy Spirit lives in us, and God, being an awesome Father, provides for everything. And looking back now, I could say that it was that week, getting into the Word and into the Scripture, I would say that that was the time I got saved, which is pretty awesome, and I want to say thank you for Scripture of the Day. Yes! Speaking of winning, Pastor Bobby, in response to your video today, we want to say that it's been such a wonderful experience getting into the Word every single morning. Hello, Scripture of the Day production team. We'd like to give a progress report from the State House. I've just been so encouraged to be reading through the Bible with everybody at the church. Now, sure, there's other commentaries out there we can go look online or something, but those aren't fun. That's one way I see myself just being encouraged because the Lord just in that season used what you guys were practically talking about and choosing from, you know, the scripture of the day to really challenge my walk, to even convict me in my walk and to even increase my faith in the Lord. You know, things that 
you know, that y'all pointed out, I didn't really see. Just send a note of encouragement to Pastor Bobby, Pastor Bill, and to everybody who's responsible for Scripture of the Day. It's made a huge difference um, in the lives of Brenda and myself as we uh, read through the Bible every single day um, using Scripture of a Day as our guide. Oh, one thing Let me just show you that people know about me. Here's our, uh, I like to eat. Uh, you know, Today's chapter is 1 Thessalonians 5. And we could break this chapter down into two sections. The first section is verses 1 to 11, which is about the day of the Lord, which comes like a thief in the night. And the second section is verses 12 to 28, which are these like staccato, like practical commands just coming bam, 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 that Paul leaves the Thessalonians with. So in verse 1 through 11, it's clear the day of the Lord is a terrible time of judgment that is coming upon planet Earth, often referred to as the tribulation, this seven-year time period prophesied all the way back from the book of Daniel. And he says it's going to come like a thief in the night. And people are going to be saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And the judgment comes and people are not going to be ready. But he says that we, we should be ready. We're not of the night. We're not of the darkness. We're not out there getting drunk. No, we should be sober. We should be walking in the day. And we should be ready for the Lord to return for the end of all things. So again, in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, there's a clear eschatology theme. But when we break down what it actually says, it's not futuristic science fiction. It's saying live ready right now. And the only way to be ready all the time is to stay ready all the time. When you don't know what it's coming, you don't know what night the thief's coming or when in the night the thief's coming. So you lock your door and close your windows every night. In the same way, we've got to stay ready. And I just think that we're, we've been reading through uh, Scripture of the Day so long. And there's so many chapters in the New Testament. This is the last chapter of 1 Thessalonians. I mean, are you really staying ready? Are you really staying on top of things? It says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. It's like, hey, we got to keep spreading this message. Hey, stay ready. Hey, look sharp. Stay dressed for action. Keep your lamps burning. Be ready. The Lord's coming back. Oh, and people are like, ah, he's not coming now. Ah, now's not, it's, it's not that bad right now. There's peace right now. Oh, that sounds like, yeah, it's very close to him coming back if people are saying that. So the point is, be ready. That's the clear application that we can all take away. And in these staccato-like commands in the second section, um, there's one that just jumps right off the page as I was reading it. Uh, verse 16, rejoice always. A lot of times these three uh, verses, 16, 17, and 18, are put together. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. But when I read rejoice always, I can't help but think rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Man, it's awesome to see the double clap going all over Facebook, all over Instagram, all over my text feed. Somebody hit me up tonight. They're like, I bet the double clapping, the clap emojis, your number one emoji right now. Hey, let's keep this double clap going. When it says rejoice in the Lord always, it's saying that for a reason. And I think it, it pairs perfectly with the idea of staying ready. The reason I'm ready is I'm rejoicing in Jesus Christ. I'm thinking about how he loves me, how he shed his blood to make me righteous, how I'm going to be with him. That thought I can rejoice in at any moment, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what the circumstance is. And, and Paul, here he is saying that to another church. There's a lot of similarities between the first Thessalonians that we began our church with and the Philippians that we're studying in this summer of joy. That's really gonna take our church to the next level. As we said in some of the services this weekend, we've got a major announcement we're really excited about coming up this weekend at our church. And we're gonna be doing a sermon from the Philippians chapter one about being partners in the gospel. 
And that Paul, he says it both to the Thessalonians and the Philippians, these people that he really felt like they got it. Their church was doing well. People there were all about the gospel. And he's like, hey, then let's rejoice always. Don't lose the joy of Jesus Christ. Don't let the good news of Jesus become old news in your soul. Keep it fresh. That's what he's saying. Keep yourself stirred up by how good it is to know Jesus and rejoice in the salvation that you have in Christ. Rejoice always. Let your mindset of the eternal determine how you live in the here and now. And so I want to keep the double clap going. I mean, I hope that's not just something that we heard about in the sermon this weekend and then it just fades away and we forget about it. How do we keep that joy going all summer long? I saw some of the underground students getting together to watch the sermon last night. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're, it's fresh in our minds right now. We're fired up. Hey, we got we to gotta keep doing this always. We got to stay ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to return by rejoicing in our salvation that we have in Christ and getting our minds set on eternity. So pass it forward. Send somebody that double clap of encouragement and encourage them to rejoice. And let's keep that kind of encouragement going right here on Scripture of the Day.